guys it's Christine here and I just wanted to say welcome to the start of Stitch Mania. Today is May 1st and it's later in the day and I've actually already started my Stitch Mania but uh, that was this morning when I had just woken up and I wasn't uh, didn't want to be in front of the camera and then I realized I didn't really do a proper intro to this so it's now later in the day and I thought I would just pop in real quick just to kind of say that um, yeah, I'm probably just going to video uh, just sort of my progress as I go along. I don't really have a set uh, amount of time that I'm going to work on each of my uh, stitches, but I, it dawned on me that I hadn't actually said in this video that I was doing stitch uh, Millhill Mania. Um, so those of you that watch my channel all the time, you already know that because I have just talked about it in my Mill Hill video that I just made and I showed all of the projects I was going to start. But in case you didn't see that one, which you may very well not, fly by. Um, here he comes back again and he's a, he's a wasp, so uh, I'm a little nervous. I don't know where he went. Okay. Oh God. Okay, what was I saying? Yes, so I'm gonna insert a picture here of the Mill Hills kits that I'm going to start. Two of them are whips. I'm not gonna rehash that because if you wanna know in detail what those all are, um, I will link the video below to that. But um, stay tuned guys, and thanks for following along. This is all gonna probably be shown at the end of May, the end of the month. And um, I may just show all my starts as I'm starting them and then at the end do kind of like a parade of showing you how far I got on all of them. So, but no, no, don't hold, don't hold me to that. Um, okay, guys, uh, happy mania. And if you're participating, good luck. And if you're just uh, just supporting those crazy people that are doing it, thank you. We appreciate it. <laughs> all right, guys. See you in a bit. Hey Stitchers, it's May 1st. Happy Stitch Mania. I am sitting on my deck as you can see. It's a beautiful spring morning. I have my hummingbird feeder set out even though it's pretty early to see hummingbirds here. There have been reports that they are in the area and so we'll see. We have it sitting out. And, um, yeah, I've got a bag in front of me of all my Mill Hill kits that I'm going to work on this month. So I thought I would um, attempt to do, this is my attempt to do a vlog this month. Um, I'm not making any promises that I'm going to be successful at vlogging all month long. But I think one way is me not being in front of the camera, then I have probably a pretty good shot because then I can, you know, record like I am now where I just woke up not too long ago and I am in no way shape or form um, ready to be in front of a camera at this moment. So here is my bag and uh, these two that I have in the back are works in progresses which I don't feel like working on today. I want to start something new and then there's this one in front that I'm going to hold off and I'm going to start this on May 21st because Sarah over at Stitch and Mommy and I are going to um, do a little sal with that. So that one gets started on the 21st. So I'm just going to reach in here and um, just grab one of my small ones for today. Well, let's grab this one. What is it? Okay, it looks like it's root beer float, so that's a good one to start today, I think. And um, I have already pre-sorted all of the floss in all of my kits, so they're all ready to go. So I can actually just open this up and start stitching. So let's see here. Look at all those beautiful beads. And yeah, I don't think there's uh, anything more to really say about it other than the fact that I'm going to... Um, sort of leave it open as to how long I'm going to work on them. I, I, because I have, what, like only 9 or 10 projects and there's 31 days in the month that does leave me a little bit of um, options as to um, how long I want to work on each project and also if I don't get around to starting one or not. So this will uh, at least be given a couple of days 
So I think I'll check back here in a couple days and show you my progress on it, and then we'll go ahead and pick another one after that. Good morning, guys. It is the morning of May 3rd, and I wanted to show you what I got done. Actually, this was a pretty quick stitch, and I'm happy to report that I completed it. So, it didn't take long. I pretty much did all of the cross stitching in one day, and then did the beading uh, the second day. So, um, I finished it kind of late in the day, last night. And then I was going to pop in and show you what I was going to pick choose for my next one. Um, but it was just kind of late, and I didn't feel like recording, so I went ahead and... Um, did that too so I have that to show but I thought this turned out so cute my little root beer float now um, yeah actually because that was so quick I may even add some more projects this month we'll see uh, we'll see because I know these these bigger projects take long so anyway I'm happy to say that's a uh, finish number one for Mill Hill Mania so um, I went ahead and just decided last night that I would um, do one of my works in progresses, which is this hamburger that I had already started. And I was going to show you what I had done, but I can pretty much just tell you that I only had the bun part worked on and nothing else. And so last night and this morning, I went ahead and finished all of the stitching. So you can see the cross stitches are done. And all I have left now to do is the beading. And it's pretty early in the day on May 3rd. And um, barring any unforeseen obstacles, I should get the beading done today. And just in case I do get that done and want to move on to my next project, I thought I would go ahead and um, choose that with you guys now. So that in case it's later in the day, I can go ahead and get started on that and not um, feel like I need to record. So... Um, I'm kind of enjoying the small ones. I still don't think that I'm going to do one of my big ones yet, so why don't we go ahead and um, just reach in there and, well, it's not really a, I guess it's not really a surprise, but, um, well, you know what, since this one's right in front, let's just go ahead and start the tomato pin cushion. So that will be the one I work on next uh, when I get the hamburger done. So yeah, these are going a lot quicker than I thought they would. Now this one does look like it's got a lot of stitching in it, so this one might take a little bit longer to do. But I have the threads all sorted, so we're good there. And um, while we're at it, I was just going to show you um, kind of one idea I came up with for my beads is um, these little mint tins, the Altoid tins. Um, you, if you've been watching my channel, you'll know that I like to sort of convert these into little... Um, needle holders. Um, you can, you know, like do some cross stitching on the top and, and um, kind of deck them out and then decorate them and use them as like little, oh, kind of like, um, kind of on the go, what do you call them? Like stitching kits you, where you can put your scissors and some needles and just, uh, um, just something you can keep in your bag, you know, in case you find yourself being able to stitch, or if you want to go to like a, a stitch in or a retreat, these little tins are good. And I've actually been meaning to do a tutorial on how I finish them because I've done a few really cute ones. And anyway, what I've decided to do, you can get this really soft. It's, um, you get it at the, the craft store. It's actually four beads. It's like a beading mat, but it's really soft. Instead of the sticky beading mats, this is just you, um, I don't know, kind of, it's like really soft, almost kind of feels like sort of plush velvet or something, hard to explain, but I get it at the craft store, it comes in big sheets, and I cut it down to size and put it inside one of these Altoid tins. And then these are the extra magnets that come with the kits. They, the uh, Mill Hill kits always come with a magnet, and I don't usually ever use them because I turn mine into ornaments. But, and of course each kit comes with a beading needle, so I actually keep a quite a, a little set of all my extra beading needles in there. These beading needles are really tiny. So I always keep a beading needle and then a couple of those magnets in here, and then when I get ready to do my beading, I just dump some beads out into here. Then if you find yourself needing to uh, close up shop really quick and put your stitching away, then your beads are nice and safe inside the can. So I'm planning on doing a little, maybe I'll make a pattern or something like that, but do a little cross stitch for the top of this that says beads on it. Maybe deck it out actually with some beaded cross stitch and then um, attach that to the top of this so it looks a little prettier than just Altoids. But yeah, 
that's what I do for my beading when I want to take it on the go. Okay guys, well I'm going to get back to stitching just as soon as I eat breakfast because my husband's getting ready to make some pancakes for breakfast on this beautiful Sunday morning, May 3rd. Yeah, win them all. <laughs> Good morning, guys. It's May 5th, and uh, that means it's Mania Day number 5. And I'm going to check in and show you where uh, my progress is. So I last showed you that I had the... I think I showed you that I had all the cross-stitching done on the hamburger, and I am pleased to say that I completed it. These things are going really quick, so they take about two days. It's been taking about two days for me to do. And you can see how cute that turned out. You can really see the beads when I hold it that way in a little heart. So yeah, okay, we got two finishes down so far. Um, and then I went ahead and started the tomato pin cushion. And yesterday and a little bit this morning, as you can see, I finished the cross stitching, all of the cross stitching and back stitching on this. Let's get a better view of that here. So it's got the little needle thread and then the pins coming out and the thimble that has some French knots in it. And then today I'm hoping to get all the beading done on this one. And when I do, I'll go ahead and start project number four. So let's reach into the bag and see what that's going to be. I'm going to continue with the small ones because I like how fast they're going. So I've got, I think, three more back there. So let me just pull one out here and see. Okay, looks like it's going to be triple scoop. So, okay, great. All right, I'll check in. So um, hopefully we'll, next time I check in, I'm hoping to have the tomato pin cushion completed and a good start on the cross stitching for this one. See you probably in a couple of days or for you just a, a second. Well good morning guys and happy Stitch Mania day number seven or May 7th and I'm sitting on my deck and actually the wind started picking up. I, I put shorts on today and then I, I came and sat here and I realized it's kind of chilly out here. The wind is cold and my wind chimes are going so Hopefully that won't be too distracting, but I'm going to make this quick anyway. So last I showed you, I had gotten the stitching done on my tomato pin cushion, and I am happy to report that it is done. These are just turning out so cute, and which I didn't realize, this one had this cute little, can you see the little um, dangly little thingamabob on there that's supposed to resemble the strawberry emery. I just think that turned out so cute. This is one of those that probably from the picture it doesn't necessarily look, I mean I guess it does look cute but you know it's got these kind of variegated beads around the bottom here that are kind of a sort of a they have different shades of pink and in orange and stuff to them to kind of give the tomato a little bit of color. But so cute. This one had a little bit of back stitching and some French knots, but nothing too uh, too difficult. And I whipped it out in two days, just like all the rest. And I have to say, I haven't really been spending a whole lot of time stitching. So these are really quick and I'm just really impressed with uh, how much I'm getting done already for May 7th. So. As uh, you saw, I chose this one to be my next project, and just this morning I finished up the last bit of stitching on it. Did the stitching and the French knots. You can see there's a few French knots there, and uh, some back stitchings of the uh, back stitching of the cone. So I am going to work on the beads for that today, and it looks. Um, yeah, as you can see, there's like these kind of strings of beads and a couple of bead clusters. So that should be some interesting fun. And I'm going to cut this short because, yes, the wind is really picking up and I just don't know how, how that's going to come across on the video. Um, so let's go ahead and um, 
choose my next project. I've got two more small ones left and let me reach into the bag here. Oh, it looks like I zipped it up. Okay, so the last two small ones that I have before I start the bigger ones are, it, are the um, pizza and the hedgehog. So, um, first I was thinking, oh, I've been doing all the food, so, I mean, well, I guess the tomato pincushion wasn't food, but this one looks a little more tedious because of all the little back stitching, uh, the, the little furs and stuff, so I think I'm going to do this one next because, um, I don't know, it just looks a little easier. And they're probably both only going to take me a couple of days to do, but uh, we'll just go ahead and do the pizza. We'll keep a, along with the food theme, and then I'll do the hedgehog. So I'll check in again when I have the ice cream cone hopefully done and a good start on the pizza. Okay, so all right, I'll see you in a couple of days. Well, good morning, guys. It's now the been a few days since you last saw my little progress report. It is now May 14th. And um, yeah, I didn't have a chance to check in, but I am happy to say that I have got some progress to show today. Um, yes, I have completed three more Mill Hill kits. So I think the last time you did, the last clip you just saw, I had done the stitching on the ice cream cone, the triple scoop, and was planning on doing the beading. So let's see my finish on that. I was kind of hoping the sun would be out. It's sort of overcast and so uh, it doesn't quite show the color I was noticing on here, but you can see all those beads and how wonderful they look. I just would say that it probably is looking, it looks a little bit brighter pink than that shows, but still, didn't that turn out adorable? I'm not sure I did those beads correctly, but um, it still looks amazing and I love it. Let me see, maybe this might give it a better, if I put it in the shade, maybe that gives it a little bit. Yeah, that kind of shows a little bit more of the true color, the pink on it, but so cute, so cute. And I just always get so hungry for these things when I'm stitching them. So, yep, triple scoop. So what does that make? Finish number four? I think that was finish number four for the month. Okay, so um, next up we had the pizza slice. Once again, made me hungry while I was eating it. And this is how that turned out. Like a real slice of pizza right there, pepperoni pizza. Once again, color's not quite right. Let me put it here next to the ice cream cone. Yeah, that's, that's looking a little bit better. There. So cute. So everything was just going along so smoothly until I got to this little hedgehog and I had a little bit of issues with him. Or her. I'm going to call her a her. So when I was sorting the floss, well here, let me show you how it looks in the end, and then I'll show you my issue with it. Okay, so, oh gosh, is that just the cutest thing ever? So, so adorable. Okay, let me put that one right here. So you can see the colors on that one a little bit better. sitting out on my deck and of course yes I probably should have dusted this table off because it hasn't been dusted off for spring yet so anyway oh is that the cutest thing ever so let me tell you my mishap when I was sorting the floss remember I told you I pre-sorted the floss for all these and I had stitched the whole thing and realized hold on let me put you on pause Okay, as you can see, some of these have two symbols on top of them. It's because when I originally sorted this floss, um, apparently I missed a symbol. I missed this very light symbol right here. And what I had done, I realized, is that this very dark brown, I sort of mixed that in with this brown. 
and thought it was the same color and so I was one brown short. So when I stitched this, I stitched almost everything and then when I got to this symbol, I'm like, where's that symbol? Realized that that symbol was supposed to be that brown and so then everything got shifted down a shade after I had done the stitching. So basically I was supposed to have what, like one, two, three, four, five browns and I only had four. So everything in my hedgehog ended up being off, every brown ended up being off by one shade in my hedgehog when I was done stitching. Now, I have to say, I didn't fix it. I left it as it is and nobody will ever know, right? Except you guys. So yeah, did I miss a stitch? I missed a stitch and you know what? It just showed up on camera right now. I just see, do you see it guys? Right there under his eye, right there. I'm missing, I'm missing a stitch right there. Oh, weird, okay, I'll have to go fill that in. Um, hmm. So anyway, as you can see, it just didn't need to be redone because although this is a quick stitch, it was not in my mania plans to stitch the hedgehog twice. And so I left it as it is and nobody will, like I said, nobody will ever know. He's cute, he's adorable, he's just a little bit, I think there's just not as much contrast in him Let's look at the picture. You can definitely tell underneath. You see how dark brown it is kind of more like uh, shadowy. There's more kind of darker brown underneath here, there, and you can see some of the darker specks in there. But, you know, it's just like negligible. So I left it. She is adorable. Okay, um, so I've decided that since it is May 14th and we're halfway through the month of May that I'm going to go ahead and upload this video up to this point. And oh, I have to say, I have been absolutely horrible about posting any pictures of these on Instagram. I have not posted a single picture in the hashtag. And thank you for those of you that are doing the hashtag Millhillmania on Instagram. I've completely enjoyed seeing your beautiful projects and I am sorry that I have not posted any myself but I'm going to remedy that and I'm going to start posting these hopefully this afternoon. So you'll see this video and then moving on for the second half which you'll see that update at the end of the month I'm going to continue on with doing the rest of these. Now this one I actually already started last night so I'm going to do these bigger ones. I'll go ahead and show you the progress that I got on him just last night. So um, I'll probably start the second half of this video for the second half of the month as soon as I get the stitching done with him. Okay, so I think the barking has stopped. Um, I just re really quickly want to say what I'm going to do work on on the second half of the month is going to be Yellowstone Santa, the Winged Monarch, the Conch Shell, and this is a work in progress that doesn't have too much done on it, but I would like to uh, make some progress on Ravens. Realistically, I don't expect to get any more finishes this month, except one. I'm hoping to get this guy finished, even though he's bigger than the ornaments that I just did. He's not quite as big as uh, the other buttons and beads that have quite a bit of stitching in them. So I will try to get the rest of the pictures up on Instagram of all the ones I've finished so far. And I will see you guys at the end of the month. Hope everybody's having a good month of May and a good mania. All right. Thanks for watching. I'll see you at the end of the month.